Carlo Acutis was born in London in 1991 and his parents were Italian and they moved back to Milan and Italy and Carlo died in Milan in 2006. But Carlo's 15 years in this world were remarkable. He was a very holy child and teenager. Faith was central to his life and he lived his faith very obviously, but very ordinarily as well, in the sense that he was an ordinary young fellow who was interested in the internet, who was interested in uh, what all young people are interested in, but God came first. And that happened from a very early age. And even using the internet, what he did was, he was excellent with the internet, and he researched all the Eucharistic miracles that happened down through history, and he created a website for them all, he was very dedicated to Mary and he prayed the rosary, but the Eucharist was the heart of his life. He loved the Mass, and even when they went on holidays, he would always find the church that he could go to Mass because he never wanted to miss Mass. So Carlo lived this remarkable life, and he said wonderful things. You know, he said that we're all born originals, but some too many people die photocopies. But he died at a very young age. He had leukemia. He had no fear of death and he offered his suffering up for the church and for the Pope. And he died as holy as he lived. And so after he died, uh, faith in his prayer continued to grow. And over the period of time of those years from 2006, he was declared a servant of God. He was declared venerable. And now he has been beatified by the church. And one of the remarkable things is that Carlo is such, he was such a young man. He was also, he lived so recently that his mother is still alive and is a young lady. And so she is going to be present at her son's beatification. And I think Maria Goretti, her mother was present at hers, but I don't know of any other mother being present at the beatification of their child. So Antonia Acutis is going to be at Carlo's beatification. And I had the great privilege of uh, contacting her and asking her would she speak to me and talk to me about Carlo at this historic time in their lives, but more so in the life of the church. And she willingly agreed to do that. And I was very blessed to be able to talk to her uh, about Carlo and about the beatification. So it's a wonderful time and I'm so happy to be able to speak to you. He is such an inspiration. Could you tell me just about him as a little boy? When did you know that he was a holy boy? Uh, listen, since he was a small child, I was really aware that he was a special child because he was very sweet, very obedient, always with a smile. And he was very, very pious uh, on the sense that uh, since he was uh, four years old, he, he, Carlo was very much interested on everything which was uh, um, holy, the Bible. Uh, to, he wanted to enter inside the church to say hello to Jesus in the cross. He wanted to, to, to take the flowers during the, uh, when he was going to, to do walking. Uh, in the parks for bringing to the Holy Virgin. So he was really very, very sensible to everything which was uh, sacred. Uh, he could do the first communion at seven years old. And since then he, he, he was always participating each day to the Holy Mass, doing either before or after the Holy Mass, a little bit of Eucharistic adoration. He used to say that uh, uh, we are luckier than the people that lived with Jesus 2,000 years ago because uh, we can find Jesus uh, whenever we go down in a, in a church under our house. Uh, we have Jerusalem with us. Instead, they were, less, less, uh, they were not so lucky because to, to reach Jesus it was difficult. There was, uh, there was uh, space and there was uh, a lot of crowd. And it was not easy, always easy you know, to, to touch Jesus, to speak with Jesus. And he was aware about this real presence of God among us. And Jesus promised that I will be with us till the end of the world, you know, in the Gospel of St. Matthew. Everything that he, he used to do, ordinary, of the life that is common to all the, the, the young people of his age, it became extraordinary because of the presence of Jesus, of Jesus in his life. No? So for example, also when he used to play or to help friends, 
with the homework or to do website for the parish or for the for the Jesuit fathers. Um, so he used to do a lot of things, but always with this uh, presence of God in his life. Of course, to nourish himself with the Eucharist, which is uh, Jesus with his, uh, his body, his real presence. We know that Jesus uh, in the Eucharist, we have the... Um, the, 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 we have the source of love, of God is love. So when we nourish ourselves with the Eucharist, we nourish ourselves of God, used to say Carlo, of, of the love. And this uh, is very important because uh, I mean, if we were to summarize the, uh, how somebody is, 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 is saying to become holy, is to love Jesus, to love God overall, and to love our neighbors like ourselves. So, uh, in order to be able to love and to grow in this, this love, the Eucharist is the, the, the best, the yeah. best uh, mean that Jesus gives us because his is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is real, uh, is real presence is the source. In the Eucharist, we have the source of the love. Carlo was really very interested to understand where Jesus, uh, uh, not to lose the Holy Mass. Yes. And he used to yes. say, uh, all are born as, uh, as original, but many die as photocopies. Yes. So this was, yeah. uh, was a, fra uh, a, fra a phrase that uh, uh, Pope Francis uh, uh, quoted, uh, yes. and he quoted Carlo in a, chap in, in a chapter. Yeah. And uh, and he quoted this phrase of Carlo and added uh, Carlo as a um, um, as an example for all the the young people of the world the way he used internet, you know. So yeah. and yeah. also the way he was able to dominate this uh, this uh, modern uh, modern instrument. And now you eat each day the body of Christ. Um, and that this means that you you won't be uh, and, um, you will be always more closer with Jesus. So you will enter in his intimacy, like Saint John the Apostle did when he pushes his uh, his uh, his, uh, his, um, his head on the heart of Jesus on the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. And Carlo used to quote this episode to say that the. You know, the, the church has always represented the heart of Jesus as a, the Eucharist because it's, a, it's the same things. Because in the Eucharist, there is Jesus with his uh, body, yeah. uh, his real presence, and there, there is the source of love. No, it's stood that a lot of people didn't understand the importance of the Eucharist. So he thought about this exhibition in order to sensibilize uh, people to. The, 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 to the dogma of the real presence of God in the Eucharist, um, in the Blessed Sacrament. And this was a prophetic view, no? It was a prophetic view, but then... I suppose Carlo's greatest uh, work in his short life that he has left behind for us, leaving aside his prayer and all of that, was the, an exhibition that he created around the Eucharistic miracles that have happened down through the history of the Church. And Carlo researched all of these Eucharistic miracles and he documented them and he created a website where all of the Eucharistic miracles were available to be read about. But then more than that, he also created a physical exhibition that could go to different places, different churches, different halls and all of that so that many people could come and see them. So he was passionate about the Eucharist and about the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist and he used his skill with computers to and the internet to create an exhibition and then that exhibition um, has lived it was began obviously when he was alive but it has lived long after him so I asked Carlo's mother uh, how long it took him to do that work and where did this exhibition go throughout the world while he was alive and afterwards it was displayed the first time in Rome on the 2005 when uh, St. John Paul II um, um, did the year of the Eucharist. And uh, since then, uh, it was displayed in a university, pontifical university in Rome. And since then, uh, this exhibition had uh, so much success all around the world. Yes. We, uh, practically, we, 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 um, it, was, uh, it was in all the five continents uh, around the world, a thousand of parishes, and no, only in the United States, I think we are nearly 10,000 parishes. Mm -hmm. Just to tell you how Carlo with this, uh, this prophetic uh, 
view about how to to catechize uh, the, how to to spread the, the the message of God through internet I was a prophet because really with yeah. this uh, exhibition yeah. we are touching a lot of arts a lot of people are are um, approaching themselves to the Eucharist and are uh, getting closer to the sacraments then he did a lot of things I mean he was very 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 generous uh, child he used to for example the beggar in the street he used to help them to go to to, go, to take uh, meals during the night hot uh, hot beverage because of the cold uh, season and he used to do to buy blanket for them because they um, a lot of people especially in the center of milano where we live they mm -hmm. this beggar used to sleep in the street uh, over the over the the, the paper <laughs> without any blanket anything so, so carlo used to organize himself and do his charitable uh, things and then he used sometimes to be volunteer in the uh, in the place where they give meals to the poor in the school sometimes there were uh, the, some of his uh, classmates were very shy so yeah. he understood this and he used to help them to to, to 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 take confidence, you know, especially in this period that there is the bullism, bully bully problem, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Carlo was really always uh, um, very you know sensible to these uh, problems, uh, and uh, used to help his comp his classmates, uh, his friends, uh, and then used to help also for the studies for the for, for the computer uh, studies. Really. And so Carlo tried with really a, a big patience and he was always praying for people um, doing little sacrifice, like for example, to renounce to, to the Coca-Cola, to the Nutella or to <laughs> his uh, favorite. Uh, I mean, he used, he, he used not to do penitence like it was in the ancient time, you know, but he used to do little renounce, little sacrifice to offer where, whatever he could, you know. Yeah. Uh, for the salvation of the souls, he did a lot of things, and also in his life, during his life, he obtained a lot of miracles uh, because he prayed for uh, for conversion of people, for healing of some people, and he obtained graces during his life because he had a big faith. Faith. He used to pray a lot. He used to pray the rosary, to pray the novena. And he was very, very traditional on on his prayers. But yeah. he was also very modern in the way he, li he lived, you know. Who was his favorite saint? Uh, listen, Saint Francis of Assisi, right. uh, then uh, Saint Michael, uh, Saint, uh, the Archangel Saint Michael, yeah. uh, apart the Holy Virgin, of course. Uh, yeah, Father Pio, Saint Anthony of Padova, uh, Santa Gemma Galgani, Saint Gabriele yeah. della Dolorata. Yeah. He loved all the saints. Carlo believed in the Eucharist, he believed in the sacraments, he had so many saints that he had great devotion to. And I thought that it was very important to find out what Carlo's message for young people was today because he is an immediate saint. His body is uh, dressed in a sweatshirt and jeans and runners. He's like any other young person. So I asked his mother, what is his message for young people in today's world? I think, I think Carlo is prophetic in a way. This is the society of the Antichrist. He used to say that this is the society of the Antichrist. You know? yeah. he, he has been nominated a little bit a sort of influencer of God. Yeah. Um, this, uh, what does it mean, uh, Carlo, to say this? Is the society in which uh, we tend to put ourselves at the center of the world and to eliminate God. For example, let's see the star system or the fact that in front of a rock singer, people, uh, I mean, uh, adorate uh, this singer. And uh, then in front of the tabernacle, you used to say, Carlo, there is no this queue. You don't find this queue, no? And this is a sign that... Uh, uh, we, we forgot about God and he used to say not me but not uh, God go, not me but God you know mm -hmm. in, in Italian you say non io ma Dio mm -hmm. no, not the, lo, the love of him, himself but the love of God the, yeah. uh, the, 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 the sadness is the is the, 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 the regard on himself and the, 
happiness is the, to to look on, on God, you know. So everything is, uh, you know, concentrated in, in in ourself, you know. Yeah. We forget uh, that uh, the, the the happiness is to put God over all, uh, to love God over all, and to uh, to love. Uh, our neighbors, our like ourselves. So Carlo is a little bit uh, the contrary, no, of um, of uh, what is the mainstream today, <laughs> saying that you have to put God at the first place. This is the, the real happiness. Yeah, what is yeah. uh, important now is uh, is uh, is to have success, to have uh, to be beautiful, to go to do sport, to do, to have a, a beautiful body. I mean, uh, we forget about our soul. We forget that our goal is uh, to go to heaven, to reach Jesus, uh, and the, 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 that life is very short. And, and we forget uh, completely about the supernatural side of our life. And this is a big problem because it creates nevrosis, uh, depression, uh, violence, uh, criminality. We have drugs, pornography, a lot of things that are terrible. When we start to do some good things, like, for example, Carlo did with the exhibition. I mean, many people um, spontaneously ask to help to diffuse this exhibition. So he created, the, in the good things he did, he created also other good things, you know? Like, for example, the fact that many people started to... Uh, to to be apostle of the Eucharist, and so this is was a big result because, in the miracle to do a, a good things, you also create a, a chain of good. Uh, Must be so full of joy to be going to his beatification on Saturday. Yes, no, we are happy because of the all the faithful he has all over the world, so we are very 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 happy. It will uh, give a lot of uh, consolation to the to the to the faithful he has all, all, around, all around the world. So it is very important that Carlo is recognized from the church so that he can, uh, his message, his spiritual message can be followed from many people. And in fact, Carlo has a very simple message. You know, he put at the center of his life the importance of the sacraments. Yeah. I mean, his, his holiness is the sacrament. Uh, he used to say that uh, the Eucharist is my 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 highway to heaven. No, so yeah. uh, <laughs> I mean he put him, all his confidence in, in the Eucharist in Jesus, uh, and uh, then he could do fantastic things. And yeah. so this can can is 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 a is a destiny that can be for everybody. No, because uh, it's simple to follow this. Uh, spiritual path of Carlo. It's not so difficult, no? And he, he had confidence in the sacraments and he, he, he with the sacrament, he, he became a saint. So, I mean, it's something that everybody of us can do, no? The church, we know, is created from God and is, is holy. It's a, it's a pity that some young people um, go away from the church because they don't have a particular sympathy for the priest or they think badly about some, 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 some people of the church. I mean, yeah. anyway, Jesus, through the, the church, give us, uh, I mean, uh, treasures. So, to, um, really, it's, it's a pity that uh, a lot of people um, private themselves of these uh, treasures important thing is that uh, we know that Jesus promised that through the church it will have uh, given us the salvation and this is what Carlo trusted this yeah. is what Carlo did eh? this was the force of Carlo the sanctity of Carlo eh? yeah. to trust in the sacrament to trust in the church because his confidence his trust on the church um, was his uh, his force you know was his sanctity so I think uh, this is the message, I mean, uh, the, to the young people, to, to read the gospel, to understand that the sacrament, uh, and so it's important that uh, these sacraments are really uh, loved. Uh, I mean, it's very easy, you know, you know? I mean, it seems that to, to speak about sacrament is so, I mean, it's the most simple things, you know, it's, it's everybody can attend a mass, can attend a confession, can have uh, oh, this other sacrament. It's uh, for everybody, so it's uh, so easy, no? And uh, I hope that uh, will grow in the young people the faith on the sacrament, the faith on the, on the on the fact that Jesus, through the church, 
guide ourselves and give us salvation. Okay. And my final question, just it must have been wonderful to see your son's body again when they opened the tomb. Yes, it was uh, beautiful. I mean, they find him intact. That yeah. means, uh, I mean, you cannot use the, the terminology incorrupt because the bishop said that you can use only for Jesus and the Holy Virgin. He oh. was intact. Then they put a mask on the face, but the yeah. face was uh, intact. The only thing is that the, the, the skin was a little bit brownish. And this mask was, um, was very important because, uh, I mean, of course, uh, it's not his, uh, his skin. You know? His skin is, uh, is, is intact, but is a little bit brown. No? Okay. But it uh, gives the possibility to the faithful to, to yeah. venerate his body, to pray in front of his body, which gave a lot of uh, consolation to the faithful. Obviously, Carlo's mother is right. Carlo does bring great consolation to the faithful. He brings great hope to people as well, and particularly to young people, because of the life that he lived, the holy life that he lived, but also because we can be confident that he is now with God in heaven, and he is in a wonderful place to hear our prayer and to bring our prayer to God. And Carlo had such a lively and active faith that is relevant to people of all ages, like about the Eucharist and about going to Mass every day. He said, the more Eucharist we receive, the more we become like Jesus, so that on earth we have a foretaste of heaven. So he knew exactly about the real presence of Jesus. And then about the great sacrament of confession, he says, our soul is like a hot air balloon. If by chance there is a mortal sin, the soul falls to the ground. Confession is like the fire underneath the balloon, enabling the soul to rise again. It is important to go to confession often. So the two things I think about Cardo for us today, one is to be inspired by his life and trust his presence in heaven as we pray through him. But the second is to live as he lived, love the Eucharist, love the sacraments, love Mary and care for one another.